Hello friends, I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite and probably easiest project to do. It's a carving spoon. What I like about it, it's pretty simple. It doesn't need a lot of tools. But at the same time, there's a lot of room for improvement. Like you can do like basic spoon or you can uh, get harder wood. Like for example, I prefer carve like maple or uh, birch but this one is actually the lilac and it dried out uh, straight up on my yard it's actually dead for like a couple of years I did a test cut and this is hard like a stone I like to work with this type of materials the reason why because I like to have them like very slim try to make them as slim as possible and this wood would allow you and also another good thing about working with the hard hard wood is you can polish it like it's become like almost plastic feeling like when you touch the wood you would not believe yourself that it is a wood basically when we did birch wood uh, the last one i did i was a little spoon to do honey i do them longer because you can grab from a honey jar without getting your hands dirty. Uh, I start polishing from, uh, not polishing, sanding from 100 grit, went all the way down to 1000, then I flipped my 1000 uh, sandpaper upside, backside up and used just the paper and kept polishing it and it become like mirror, mirror polish, like not like a metal but it's very shiny. Uh, that's why I prefer stronger wood but you can do spoon like for example for example this one this is not finished yet it just you see it's all rough this one i made uh, from poplar the poplar is easy for practicing the problem with it it's very fragile and if you do like wrong turn it kind of breaks up uh, and it's more like I wouldn't use this spoon for like eating whatnot because uh, it sucks so much water. I'll show you a ten of a project how to protect your spoon from getting water damage. Like uh, when I finish my spoon, it's what I do is I boil it in, in the oil. It get darker. I know it get that because uh, it's kind of burning in the oil, but at the same time, oil displays water in in the wood if it's any left and kind of penetrates inside the wood and that gives you food safe uh, natural protection from well, it's kind of stabilized uh, your wood uh, sometimes i carve uh, green wood which is probably the easiest because green wood is softer than uh, hardened like dried out and hardened wood but you need to be quick because uh you carve it make Take the shape, polish it between if it takes like sometimes I do a little bit and leave it. I put it in a ziplock just to keep moisture in, lock it, lock it in, otherwise it's gonna split. And when I finish it, I boil it in the oil, water gets evaporated, it becomes darker, oil gets in, and after that it's kind of good to be used, good to be washed, not dishwasher safe, but good to be washed. Okay, let's start. First, when I looked at the wood, like for me, knots, I'm not trying to avoid them because I kind of like the way they look uh, when you work them out, but they're harder. Like if you're a beginner, I would prefer for you try not, not to use any knots because when you're carving your knot, you're gonna go from both directions. You cannot just carve it straight as you would do with a straight wood. That's why in my case, I would use this part definitely. But if you don't really want to work too hard, cut it like here. This knot though, it's not a big of a deal because it's got to be a handle. And you see that natural curve? You know, that's, that's actually benefit. It's not, you can cut from, uh, you can carve from straight wood as well. It just needs bigger lock because my lock is my branch is not as big like pretty much 
it's a final measurement like you you cannot have it much smaller for the tablespoon let's start shaping it up uh there's gonna be several videos put it together like i wouldn't be doing continuously but i'm not gonna do anything behind the camera like all those little pieces will be continuous project and then you will see how long does it actually take to make a spoon well of course subtract me talking because i'm talking a lot okay now we're gonna cut it out okay now we're going to cut out about nine inches nine or ten it's it's way too long for a spoon but it's easy to work it longer then you can uh, cut it to a size at the very end when you complete it again we got in 10 inches off and it's very approximate you don't really need to be exact when you're cutting guys be very careful because it's not straight when you start cutting you might jump the blade and pull the pull the wood from your hands that's why I keep your hands away from blade as, as far as it's safe also when I cut in it I'm making sure it sits at the bottom and both sides goes against the fence and of course this device that's to hold your wood on place wouldn't work because uh, this is not straight piece of wood again nice that's what we come up with now we're gonna mark it down and shape it okay this is what we try to achieve our spoon itself the ball of a spoon let's say this way it's angle against the handle normally at the neck this part we call neck it's the slimmest part of a spoon then it's kind of widening up just for comfort comfort of holding it because you want to make sure it's like sits good in your hand when you're eating you're gonna play with the shapes and see what normally tells you where to go the bowl itself my favorite it's egg like shape a little bit pointy at the very edge of it and nice and round and soft here that's that's how i prefer to do those don't do it too deep because sometimes when you carve you leave a lot of materials here that wouldn't be comfortable to eat same here like even if you carve all the way to here this is a very deep spoon it's uncomfortable to eat from i'm usually go no more than one inch that's that, that even that is like kind of three quarter would be the best probably and the more you practice the shallower uh the slimmer it's going to become don't don't do the wall less than i would say 3 16 would be ideal because after that it will be too fragile remember we're still working with the wood and yep that's our next step as you can see here it's naturally curved i did cut here it just because it was cut it this way and i need to have my spoon basically start from here what i'm gonna do is here's gonna be my spoon like this and then I'm gonna go up I will cut down here to this point and then I'll cut from here opposite and this is I'll cut out this part like you can do a lot of cuts and as of right now because it's a very little piece I don't want to risk my hands working on the saw because blades are grabbing pretty good especially soft wood to be honest I uh, using hand saw for that it's just safer and I have better control and remember safety it's our highest priority like all fun stops when you cut yourself that's why guys be very our next step is going to be cutting for material to be removed first cut goes here at the edge where bowl 
turning into the neck this point I did cut already but by, by saw I'm always using hand saw for that and I went down and about inch and a quarter at most I pre-marked it previously you can see my knife oh sorry my pencil mark here that's where my spoon gonna start from let me turn it around for you now you see see that's my angle and that's my neck start rising up to create that angle between handle and spoon now our next cut going to be from behind because we need to cut it here this part when we cut it here we can remove all this material without working hard because it's going to be it's not going to pull all of this material out and then we can go again from this side against to the cut and cut a cleaner handle on this side we're going to go from top of a neck all the way to the ball and then from peak of a ball all the way here my branch right now this big that's basically what we have as you can see i try to position my spoon like the ball of a spoon more or less in the middle of a branch because that's the widest part that's what we need and that's what i'm trying to get okay let's let's do cut That's what we use harvest for. Be careful. Don't try to remove everything at once. cut already this is of course way too many material for the handle but that's now we need to decide what we're gonna do or we want to bend it down to have like arch here or we want to keep it straight uh, regardless it needed to go a bit down I would say up to up to here that's gonna be our top Now that's more like spoon angle right now, you can see it. And don't remove too much of the material, because, well, you cannot glue it back, of course, so it is. That's another thing what I like about this wood is the texture. Texture, you can see it, it's already start showing. Now we're doing the back. looks to me already like kind of spoon but not spoon yet because we have to shape it this way and just so you know guys you can use bent saw to do all of that as well like I prefer axe because I got a let's say this way I don't have bent saw <laughs> plus uh, I kind of used to axe for spoon carving and this is probably more than plenty size wise to do spoons uh, but yeah, if you have a bent saw, 
probably would be a good idea to try it out it's kind of gonna make you work quicker and less risk if you still decided to use ox make sure your fingers always away you don't cut against your palm never hold it like this because you would not be able to control your ox before we proceed with the uh, shaping we need to get a center line you can use hands or you can use ruler whatever you're comfortable remember you the judge nobody else you don't do it to get anybody's approval you do it to get satisfaction of what you've done this is not my final shape it's just just the way I want to how that's how far I want to work with ox you could pre-cut these sides too ready piece to start working the knives twisting it because this way you can see from different angles and you can get an idea because sometimes it looks straight from one side but as soon as you turn it it starts looking not so straight let's say this actually I think I'm gonna stop the nux and call it a night Okay, what we have here, this angle, this is sharper than I need to, I would go a tiny bit down, like this section will be removed. I would not do it by axe, the reason why, because there's nothing to hold on and I don't want to put my hand here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my knives and I'm going to carve it off and basically this is where my spoon is going to come to. let me remove some bark because bark is kind of dark okay this is what my shape is going to be as you can see it looks more natural and of course all of this will be worked down like I don't think my neck gonna be thicker than a pencil but this is just specifically for this piece of wood if we use something like poplar any soft wood like you can use pretty much anything this is this is fur I use it for sculpting it's very very soft of course you can do a spoon with something like this longer a bit but yeah something like this because uh, this is good wood to carve but you cannot have very slim forms because it will break comparing what we have here okay next step is 
working with the knives. Okay, now we're marking more or less carefully where you want to be. Like you can tell here, there's our main line and these two pieces are different width. I'm usually like, I'm, out, I'm normally eyeballing. I don't know, it just, I let wood dictate me how it needed to be. And sometimes if it's a little bit off, it looks more interesting. But you can also do template. For that you can take, uh, you just print the shape of a spoon on a piece of paper, cut it out and outline. Okay, and not. We're gonna look into that to see if I can uh, actually carve it out to a solid piece, like without all those little fractions, little cracks. Uh, most of my knives is a handmade knives, but you can use knives being made by manufacturer. It's personal choice. Like this is used to be a kitchen knife, and I just got it converted because I have too many kitchen knives. Convert this one into this knife. Uh, the reason I like this knife, it's easier to control because it's a wider blade and for removing a big amount of wood, this is very comfortable grip and as you can see, I'm trying not to remove whole lot at once because then I can control it better. Because when you start rushing yourself, that's uh, a straight way to cut yourself. Just take your time, especially around knots. Uh, and like I said before, for the first couple project, I would recommend you avoid knot, because that's gonna make it a whole lot easier. But, when you have not, it just gives it character, like wood looks more interesting, especially when it's polished. And all we do now is just we twisting it, looking at it, shaping it, shaping it, shaping it. I do basic shape outside first. Like not exact what I want to have at the end, but close enough. Then my next step going to be carving a spoon out itself. You see my finger? All the force goes by this finger at pushing it. And this arm, all I do is I twist it. I don't push, I just control it. And even if I do some wrong move, if it goes out, it goes out forward, not on my arm. If I need to carve this section, for example, you need to place it. I'm usually place it into my chest, because I got okay, I used to it. And then what I do, these fingers, helping me out and again I'm not using muscles here all I do is I'm scooping 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 very short and if any mistakes you don't have that lot of force into your knife you don't cut yourself just keep scooping no rush you'll get to it you'll you'll be good at it and you'll do it quick
here we go we get to the point when I am kind of ready as you can tell this side is flat this is a little bit boring uh, it will be straightened up like this and hopefully all those tiny cracks will be worked away but you can see how it looks right now when it's going to be polished it will be killer it's going to be beautiful now another thing why i'm not doing full complete round shape but that's my approach it, it's not necessary the way you should do it but i like it this way is because when i start carving it down the knife gives you pretty uniform turns it's like if you use same angle and same uh, force you're gonna give you pretty uniform turns and your your inner ball will be pretty much your guide for your outside part if you don't feel like doing it just by i don't know by hand like without any marking then you can do this make a line and just mark it down okay let's do it uh, speaking of knives this is another knife I'm using for my spoon making this one uh, mostly for cleaning or removing uh, big amounts uh, comparing this knife it's just easy to work because the way you grab it but sometimes you like here this knife works much better than this knife because I gotta use my whole arm to force it when I cut and I found this one much safer to work with also I have this knife that's for doing very tiny little cuts as you see by shape it does pretty deep cuts and it it bent a bit up not so much but a little bit that gives also a little bit of leverage and this is for final cleaning I don't use these knives to remove uh, main amount uh, it's not that comfortable honestly because you gotta you need to have side in order to kind of force it forward and curve at the same time uh, that's why to start with this knife will be more difficult and those are I got three sides I got them off eBay because I don't have my own forge and I can do those shapes it's just cheap enough like I paid 20 Canadian bucks on it uh, it's cheap enough to buy them of course it's kind of luck if you got them with a good metal sometimes you can get apparently cheap knives but with a good metal in it see see this part sorry this part it's like a pearl because of the wood at the knot part the wood start twisting 
and from going this direction actually it was growing from here to there it twists and start growing out and this twist gives us this rainbow looking wood and when it polished it just glow from inside I really like that this effect it yeah it takes time to carve it but the result is just excellent looking unusual piece of wood okay here's a problem I'm facing I'll show you you see this center of a knot start coming out and it's not much you can do about it it just coming out that's what I was afraid of okay let's see. I still can save it I'm gonna try to save it what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shave it down to compensate for this part but not now I'm gonna keep it like this because I don't want to keep cracking because as soon as you open it when you force it you're gonna kind of chip more pieces away from it what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it slimmer, work on my bowl, work on my shape, and when I'm happy, I'm just gonna cut this surrounding, oops, sorry. I'm gonna cut this surrounding when it's already in shape, just like that. Another thing I want to tell you guys, for the softer wood, like willow for example, if that would be the willow, you can see the center right here. You must avoid it because willow center is bigger and it's soft and yeah, you need to make sure you're not, like you can cut your spoon from quarter round, like basically have a bigger log, split on four, and that's going to be a quarter round where there's no center line. For stronger wood like this for example and this is lilac you don't have to avoid it it's actually gonna looks pretty cool like a center core I like it myself and it's gonna give you those grain lines goes all over all directions
step going to be making a handle. Well, I always like to have little pump, like you see this is straight. I prefer it going down a bit here. Like not not that sharp. Let's start from here and gradually going all the way down and then become flat and very end go down opposite direction making like very small like little arch always check from both directions making sure your surface here and surface here is parallel otherwise it's gonna look a little bit weird This is what I'm talking about. This is the arch I'm looking for. Never mind bottom yet, it's not there. I need to do line because you want to make sure your handle is symmetrical not necessary there is a style when you can do crooked handle like anything here there's a certain style like guys just your imagination that's the only limit here like you can do anything you can make it anyhow but for me right now, I want to make it symmetrical, like more traditional. That's why I'm gonna draw this line as a reference to see where I am. And I use this point, the center of the spoon and this point. That's gonna be my reference point. That's gonna tell me where is my handle is. A little bit crooked. A little bit crooked. More like this. Yes? Okay. Now, this side is going to be like that. And of course, this side is going to be like that. I hope you can see on the video. Now, my grain go this way, means when I carve this arch, I'll go from two directions.
Now this section. What I like to do is I like to make this as narrow. Then bring it out. Then go narrow again. Like this. And of course the line gives you just a generic reference. When you start making your cuts, you will see where to stop. Like wood will help you out on this part. see now now we're gonna get rid of these angles here here this side and this side uh, the technique I use as you notice I go rough first then I smooth first time everything like make it smoother then second time, then third time, like removing layers. I don't go on one side all the way, then another side, because there's that's how you make a mistake. You might go too far. Which just means we're gonna do rough all these corners first, then go second time and make it smoother and smoother. And meanwhile, we're gonna start working on this section of a spoon, because this is too much of a material right here that needed to be removed. This section I almost happy with. Like it could be be a little bit slimmer. Like I'm normally trying to be under quarter of an inch thickness. Like three sixteenths would be the best. Like here we have way more than that on this section. Plus it's very sharp turn i don't like that i want to make sure it's nice and smooth and yeah and we'll see maybe we will work our bow a little bit more okay let's continue <music> stage now we go more like I want to make almost round this section and I'm gonna start working the bow as well
finish. My curving. And it's going to be time for sandpaper. I want to warn you guys, do not use sandpaper until you're fully satisfied with your carving. Reason why, because the little piece of a sand stuck in the wood when you send it. Not often, but it happened. And that's gonna ruin your knife. Like basically when you start sanding, you're pretty much done with using your knives. Because there's a good chance you're gonna ruin your blade and then you'll have to start over with sharpening. It just takes time and it's more fun to spend time on carving than on sharpening. Without sharpening, no carving, that's for sure. It's kind of part of a deal. I'm pretty much happy with it. I cannot do a lot of cleaning here because of a knot. I would have to sand it. That will be a little bit of work. But other than that, I would say I could go deeper here. But I would probably prefer go shallower on on this side like so almost there you don't want to make it too deep because again it's not that comfortable to eat from deep spoon hmm still wondering if I want to remove this section or leave it I'll probably leave it Yeah, I'll leave it. Okay, sanding. For sanding, I'm gonna start with 100. You can do 80 as well, I just don't have 80 handy. And making sure everything uniformed, no bumps. You see, it starts showing right away. Same here. Keep your time, work on your bowl. As you notice, I haven't carved it all the way. That will be smoothed out by sandpaper because otherwise when you sand it, you're going to keep cracking. Basically, yeah, sanding, sanding, sanding. Okay, I'm very happy with sanding process it was all by 100 took me about hour and a half you go like all the way making sure there's no humps no like slivers nothing like actually here's the one sorry i didn't see it a little one like this is basically be sanding like when you're done 100 the spoon's pretty much ready the rest is the polishing which is you're gonna go higher grade of sandpaper next step after 100 i do 220 or 240 depending on what you have same thing you just Making sure you're not gonna have left any marks from your 100 paper. And you will see, because when you sand with a higher grade sandpaper, you start seeing wood get darker because you get rid of those loose little hairs and scratches left by other sandpaper. You look closely you can probably notice the little lines left after my 100 grit sandpaper well we're gonna go all the way to the point when we're not gonna see them after 100 I do 600 that's my next step after sorry after 220 I do 600 and after 600 there's uh, two options. 
and either boil it in oil, which I probably wouldn't do, or grab in uh, 1000 and do polishing with 1000. Then I'm gonna do 2000, and after that, I'm gonna use just paper, like this part. I flip my sandpaper, my 2000 sandpaper backwards and start polishing my paper and it's gonna start shining. And when it fully shine, if I'm not boiling in oil, I'm gonna take butcher block oil and finish it to the butcher block. The butcher block oil penetrates inside the wood and stabilize it. It's still not gonna be dishwasher safe because like dishwasher got so much, there's very hot water plus there's a chemicals. It's all, all of those spoons are hand washed, but they will be okay to be like in a soup and then you wash them. Don't leave them in the water for a long time. It's not gonna be good for them. But if you use it, then wash it right away. They're gonna last fairly long time. thing remember I showed you I left about I would say one eighth of an inch step all around here now it's gone you can tell it just because when you sand it slowly but surely fades out like sands off and it's become nice on touch kind of ridge on top of the spoon Yeah, there's no more marks left from 100 cent paper because you can tell 100 leaves, deep marks, deeper scratches comparing uh, 240. Okay, now we're gonna do 600.
this is 2000 you don't have to go this far 600 is plenty it looks really good you just I like to polish it like to make sure it's glow by itself without any finish I'll show you can you can you see a difference you see this is like matte, matte and this is like glowing yeah that's that's the goal Backside of a sandpaper, polishing up. 2000 is completed. Now just sandpaper. Okay. Look, you see the shine, right? There's no finish in it. This is just wood. And that's why all of this was done in this type of wood. The harder wood, the nicer it looks when it's finished, but it's harder to work with. And it's way almost nothing. Compared to metal spoon, it's probably half of the weight. Another benefit, it's not getting hot. Like no matter how hot your foot, you're not gonna burn your lips because it stays cold all the time. Not cold, but like room temperature. Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, actually, no. We're gonna do butcher block oil on it. I just really wanna see how it's gonna come up after me applying butcher block oil. <laughs> Okay, this is what I use, and I like it, I'm happy with it, it takes time to dry, it's not going to be as quick as like varnish, but like I said, the best part of it, it's food safe, like you wouldn't be worried about using spoon, and it stabilized, stabilizing your wood. Okay. Let's do that. It's almost empty. I had it for a long time. Holy cow, guys. Oh, look at this. Huh? Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? I don't want to put too much because it's going to dry forever. I just want to kind of do a little bit on the top. Smutri. Look at this green guys. Look at this. Yeah, I'm very happy with the result. Thank you for watching. I'll take a couple pictures when it dries out in the nicer light for you to see it. Okay, and this is our final result. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? This is just one coat of butcher block oil. All it did, it, it's kind of make it not shine, but pop out all the 
grain lines, all the different blue colors. But at the same time, it make it just a tiny bit stronger. And that's how you do spoon. We're going to do a couple of different shapes, but generically it's all the same procedure, all the same approach.